Welcome to PartialArc.com. Don't do that. I'm here to save the day. I'm here to, here to save the day. Soon I will be invincible. <laughs> because, 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 because comics. Welcome to Because Comics. This is episode 71. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and I'm joined by my co-host, the refreshed Mike Christensen. <sighs> Wow, you make that you make that look good. I know I want to have whatever that is. What I'm are just you drinking? Drinking shampoo, Jay. Wait, you're drinking shampoo? Well, if you watch the commercials, uh huh, and they're just you know the women have the shampoo in their hair. Yeah, yeah, they're washing and the it. Men have the shampoo in their hair, yep. and it looks so like refreshed. Yeah, and yeah, just alive when it's in their hair. Right. Yeah, like shampoo does. So I figured like drinking it would be the same. Must be How like come? no, must be even better because it's just going straight into your bloodstream. That refreshment is just going like right in there. Oh god! Like Gatorade. But Wait, do you wash in Gatorade? No, 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 no. But you know how they sweat that like golden stuff or like the yeah, blue yeah. stuff or whatever. Yeah. Do you? You don't actually sweat colors. Nobody actually sweats colors. Nobody I sweats. have been since I've been drinking this. You've yeah. been sweating colors. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Everything hurts. Mike, we have got to get you to the hospital. My, my body's in so much pain, Jay. Jeez. But first, we should probably do a podcast. Yeah, I could spare about 50 minutes. Oh, good enough. Uh, maybe less with editing. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll find out. We're not tied to it. We're not tied to it. Uh, I can barely move. Let's go. Woohoo! So we talk about comics, right? Yes. Every episode, we talk about the comics that we... First, we talk about the comics that we're reading, and we think, hey, you guys should read this too. Like, for example, Take It Away, J. Jones. All right. Marvel yeah. uh-huh. is a company. Um, and I true. like some of the comics they put out, specifically a comic by the title of Hawkeye. Okay. Now, Hold on. Jay. Yes. I feel like we've talked about Hawkeye before. We're not trapped in a time loop this happens not to me sometimes not this episode oh, okay perfect no this is actually in fact a new hawkeye so we have talked a new character hawkeye okay. or a new it's comic. not the all new hawkeye and which i did talk which about. you did talk about yeah this is tricky it is a comic called hawkeye uh-huh but it is about another hawkeye not a new hawkeye but another one kate bishop yes kate bishop is the other hawkeye which arguably like half of hawkeye was already about and like she was great yeah yeah. Yeah. Well, this is just her, which is wonderful. Nice. I mean, even in the other Hawkeye series, she did have issues that were just herself in yeah. California. And this is kind of a continuation of that. Oh, cool. Yeah. So this is her still in California, specifically in Los Angeles. Most of the issue takes place at Venice Beach. Oh, good. Which, for people who live in Los Angeles, it's like, hey, I know that area. Anyways, you get it, because it's like a beach in their shops and stuff. You can put it together. <laughs> so it is written by Kelly Thompson, and it is drawn by Leonardo Romero. And boy, is this comic a beautiful. Hmm. Mr. Romero does a pretty phenomenal job. I don't know his. I don't know his work. He has done some comics. I don't know all of them off the top of my head, or any of the other ones besides this one. But you can look him up. I'm sure he's phenomenal. But this comic looks amazing. Cool. The art is wonderful. Uh, it works perfectly with the Kate Bishop character, which if you don't know who Kate Bishop is, um, I've said before already that she is the other Hawkeye, but basically there are two Hawkeyes, both named Hawkeye. Yeah, um, because and- one of them, Kate Bishop first appeared when Hawkeye was dead, mm-hmm. and when Hawkeye came back, the original Hawkeye, Clint Barton, the Jeremy Renner one, sort of, um, and, and she was like, do you want your name back? And he's like, eh. You can keep it. It's, it's fine. We can both be Hawkeye. No one will care. No one, and no one does. Well, some people do. That actually comes up in this comic, but regardless, really? yeah, some people are coming to her and expecting her to be Hawkeye, um, the other Hawkeye, because um, she is Hawkeye. This is confusing. Listen, Kate Bishop, a great Hawkeye. She is very just like other Clint. Um, other Clint. Just like Clint Barton. <laughs> oh, God. This whole thing is just spiraling. Um, God, it's like that episode we talked about the brain transfer from Reed Richards and Dr. Doom. That's true. So, ba- yeah. Oof. So, basically, um, Clint Barton, other Hawkeye. There we go. First Hawkeye. Hawkeye Prime. Hawkeye Prime. Sure. Why not? Um, so, Hawkeye Prime and this Hawkeye, um, you know, Hawkeye Prime trained this Hawkeye, trained Kate Bishop. We'll use their names. Clint Barton trained Kate Bishop, and Kate Bishop is set up in the city of Venice, her own private investigation agency. She makes like a fun quip at Jessica Jones. She's like, it seems to be a thing now to be a private investigator and a superhero, (laughs) but I've delineated myself by not actually having a license to be a private investigator, (laughs) so that works out. Um, But she's very quippy. Um, She's hilarious, very entertaining. 
All the dialogue is very smartly written, and you get to kind of follow this low-level, I wouldn't even say crime, because she's hired for just private investigator reasons, which for most cases are like, track my cheating fiancé or something like that. But in this case, it's a girl who's having trouble with a bully on campus. Someone mm. is cyberbullying her, and it is Kate Bishop's job to track down cyberbully and stop them from doing all that bullying. Or things are afoot besides this? Who knows? But it's a really enjoyable first issue right away as it ends and as the comic goes on, even before I got to the ending. I was like, I'm hooked on the series. It is delightful. It is charming. It is funny. It is well drawn. It is beautiful art. And it definitely leaves you with a what going into the end of the comic. And I cannot wait for issue number two. So guys, definitely check out Hawkeye. This is the one written by Kelly Thompson and drawn by Leonardo Romero. Because if you just type in Hawkeye comics, you're going to get a bunch of results. I actually really like that she's still in Los Angeles. I feel like so often when something happens to a character and they're not immediately in another series... The next time we see them, they just kind of get reset. Yeah, there's like, you're somewhere else. But no, Kelly Thompson was like, no, this is great. This is a great situation to put her in. And also, she's still in that same, if you read the previous Hawkeye series with her and Clint Barton, she's still in the very much like kind of like dead end, like not really, her stuff isn't together. Right. And that's part of the humor and fun of Kate Bishop that she's just kind of flying by the seat of her pants. In fact, I'm trying to remember, she may have come back to New York for the all new Hawkeye series. I don't know if she lived there again, but definitely, like, she was, she there was with... is a line in this comic that, like, she tr- was tracking someone for a very, very long distance and is now in Los Angeles, so maybe that's what happened there. Yeah. And Kelly Thompson was like, no, 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 put her back in California and, like, Venice and stuff. It's fun. Let's do that. Cool. And that's why she's there, I guess. Nice. Yeah, so that's uh, Hawkeye, guys. I highly recommend it. Mike, what is your pull? My pull is crazy different from that. Uh, it's a comic from Image Comics, written by Alex DeCampi. Uh, artists are Blonde and Tony Parker. The comic is called May Day. Oh. Uh, it's a five-issue miniseries. Two issues are out at the moment, and it's set in 1971, and the writer said that the, the plan is for there to be more miniseries in the future that are also dealing with other elements of the Cold War, because it's a very Cold War-centric comic oh interesting uh, and this comic specifically this this miniseries is about a couple of russian agents in the u.s trying to take care of a mission and then everything goes just so so terribly wrong mm. major elements of the series include vodka spiked with lsd oh hippies in the desert a shootout a very graphic shootout wow um that's just the first two issues and music also music is like a big part of the series not that people are talking about it but each scene Practically, each scene has a little note somewhere in one of the panels that says... Oh, like play music? Well, it says like, you know... God, I can't think of any of the ones right now. Um, Killer by Alice... Cooper? Yes. Yes, it was Alice Cooper. Yeah. I don't know music that well. Fair enough. Or like Led Zeppelin. There's a Led Zeppelin song. It's one of the first ones I noticed. Gotcha. Um, And then at the end of each issue, there's a little like the liner notes in the back of like why each song was selected and it's like hey and also check out this spotify playlist like this is the songs that are in the comic and like what i'm listening to when i'm writing the comic and that's pretty awesome um yeah it's cool it's like definitely setting the mood and the tone and not all of them are just like this was the chart topper from such and words and things it's like no this is a super obscure song from the era but like it fits the scene and like this song is mostly just white noise but like it's this experimental song from 1965 or whatever did the writer of jerry Maguire write this comic no cameron crowe did not write this comic i definitely (laughs) didn't forget his name and needed to reference a movie (laughs) this is not from that fair enough this is very like very much a personal project this is definitely a student of history um alex DeCampi has done a lot of research into these sort of strange goings on that happened in the cold, cold war. war now i don't know if this is meant to be based on a true story or any declassified reports he didn't say any of that as far as i can remember but it is sort of like a fun crime story almost it definitely has the feel of a crime story more than a spy story hmm. because it's about people who super mess up or i don't know if they mess up so much as something goes terribly wrong and then everything continues to go terribly wrong hmm. and then it's just like okay well this is all just completely backwards and terrible now so how do you handle it that sounds very intriguing. And, and I, I, period I, I, piece as well. That's yeah, exciting. I really like it. There's some nudity. There's a whole bunch of violence. This is not a book for the kiddies. Uh, Kids, we're gonna sit down and read about the Cold War. But it's it's a really interesting comic, and I, I like the tone a lot. It's very like peck and paw style. Mm. Like it's it's very 
very much wears its influences on its sleeve, and and he talks about them all at the end of the at the end of the comic and the end of each issue. Awesome! Um, I definitely want to check that out. Definitely, that cool. definitely something you guys should check out and see what you think. Awesome, Mayday! Very intriguing. Well, guys, those were our polls, and that'll take us to our main segment. Mike, kick things off. Superman versus Muhammad Ali. Guys, it's 2017, but sadly, one of the people that we lost in 2016 was the greatest Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Um, and his birthday's coming up, actually, January oh, 17th. I didn't know birthday. that. Yeah. That's very This neat. is actually on my list of like, oh, this would be great to talk about in January, like back before he passed away. Right. <laughs> and now I was like, oh, now I gotta talk about it in January. Indeed. Uh, this is a DC Comics comic from 1978 uh the story is by denny o'neill but it's written by and drawn by neil adams Hmm. and this is you know 70s neil adams so you know this is a good looking book that's awesome and we begin in metropolis as clark lois and jimmy who are at this point in comics continuity they work for a tv studio they don't work for what uh, yeah there was a period of comics there where they worked a tv studio and not for a newspaper crazy also adorable that they all got jobs at the same time the uh studio was owned by morgan edge who i Uh, believe is a gangster so i haven't read any really any comics from this period they're Uh, doing some gangster tv news i don't know man it's just like corrupt i don't know i i I have nothing more to add to that fair enough just that is a thing but they are wandering through the inner city ghetto in august uh following on a source of jimmy's who said like oh you know go to this place and you might find this person and as promised, they find Muhammad Ali, the boxing legend, playing basketball with some neighborhood kids. Oh, cool. As they're about to begin the interview, Jimmy realizes he forgot to load film into the camera. Oh, Jimmy. But he has film. He just needs to put it in the camera. So as he's loading it, a dimensional portal opens up near them. <laughs> okay. And an alien emerges. Uh, he looks green skin, like bluish hair. A uh, human man, like humanoid shape, basically. Blue silver armor standing on like a floating disc thing. Not like super alien, basically. Okay. Star Trek alien. Fair Although enough. he does look a little bit less human as the comic goes on. He sounds like an inverted color spectrum of Captain Planet. He's got green skin, but blue hair. Anyways. Yeah, yeah it's not terrible. But he, you know, Lois tries to get an interview with him. The alien shoves her aside, and Ali demands the alien apologize. The alien slaps Ali, who punches him back, because, you know... Don't even, slap Muhammad Ali. Also, even if he wasn't a boxer, that's a pretty reasonable response. Yeah, of course. Clark runs off to, you know, go get the proper authorities. Right. And also, he figures that they'll just assume he's hiding, and that's fine, too. Then he becomes Superman, but first he goes and flies, well, after becoming Superman, before returning to the scene, he flies into the atmosphere because he thinks, this alien seems very arrogantly, like, frontin', and he probably has something to back him up. And sure enough, there's an armada, like, just in the atmosphere. Uh, just chillin'. Uh, anyway, this alien is a member of the Scrub. Is their alien race? Scrub. Scrub. C R U. Wait, nope. S C R U B B. I can read. That'd be such a crazy thing if I couldn't. And also, by the way, this is Ratlar, the their leader. But we don't learn that until way later. So just what? I'm gonna call him Ratlar because I need to give him a name. But. He's like, don't worry, I will start the conflict on the ground floor of Earth. You I, will all stay in the air. I don't know. And not support me. Well, anyway, here's the thing. The scrub pride themselves on their warrior's valor. Ah. And they admire these skills in others and have heard that Earth is among the most warlike and savage race in the galaxy. Yeah. Sure. And Muhammad Ali is among their best warriors. I love that, like, valor is mixed in with, like, insane courage. It's like, valor, you know, like one man going in to intimidate an entire planet. Well, he's not there to intimidate the planet. He's here to intimidate one guy. Yeah, sure. Muhammad Ali. A Superman arrives, now there's two, and picks up Ratlar and asks about the Armada, and Ratlar says, yeah, humans may one day prove a threat, so we want to prove we're superior to you guys by pitting one champion against one of yours. Then Superman and Ali start to debate which of them should be the champion of Earth. We learn, by the way, that Superman has been granted Earth citizenship by every nation in the UN. What? I don't think that means that he's a citizen of each of those countries, just like Muhammad Ali is like, you're not even from here. Like, you're not even human. And he's like, it's cool. I'm a citizen. The entire UN said it's cool. Like, like so they right. voted that he's definitely from Earth, but well, no, nobody no, wants him. He's the- <laughs> it's like, look, look, look. He's from Earth, but like, I don't want him as a citizen. I don't know how many places has given, have given citizenship. I doubt all 150 <laughs> whatever there were at the time. Sure. But they ask like, hey, by the way, Ratlar, like, why should we listen to you? So Ratlar partly to prove his point and partly because how dare they lay hands on him 
uh, orders one of his ships to eradicate one of the cities on Earth. Whoa! So these two missiles start firing towards St. Louis. Uh, Superman flies in to go intercept them, but as he flies in between them, the missiles pass right through him. Oh, no. He says, oh, they're plasma, electrically charged gas, I guess. So he sure. flies fast enough to create a wind tunnel to redirect the missiles into the ocean, but as they hit... Also, by the way, the narration even says that definitely, like kills a bunch of fish like that's basically an ecological disaster wow also huge tidal wave now heading straight for bermuda but superman flies in front of it slams his fists together and that creates a shock wave large enough to neutralize that wave jeez superman's pretty cool he is on point this comic uh, on the alien ships the aliens including ratlar i guess he's back up there i don't know <laughs> uh, maybe he's on the phone they see superman's power and they fear it no he's definitely he's definitely there and he's like, he's definitely on the ship. He's right? on the ship, and he's like, I wanted to see the scene where he was just standing around with Muhammad Ali, and he's like, Well, I guess I'll just go back up to the ship now. Bye. Oh, they're hearing half of this conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he did what? Uh, no, he says that humans, including Superman, are a potential disease, a festering pustule waiting to burst and discharge poison throughout our orderly empire. Gross. Because I guess these guys are like an empire that like a bunch of other planets are a part of and they're ruling. And they're orderly? This guy just came to Earth to pick a fight with one dude. Well, remember, he he is orderly from his perspective Uh, and by his standards. Sure, sure, sure. (laughs) This is the emperor talking about his empire. (laughs) Whatever I dictate is orderly today is orderly. Yeah, I mean, the whole armada's there. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. They send two missiles towards an uninhabited island and Superman gets there just a second too late and Rattler's kind of like, Look, I have, like, so many of these missiles. Like, you can't stop four. Mm-hmm. How are you going to stop a thousand? Like, let's go back to hang out with Muhammad Ali and talk about this. So they all go back to the inner city of Metropolis. They agree to a contest to decide the fate of Earth. But they haven't decided who will fight the champion of the Rattler, or of the Scrub, rather. And so Rattler's like, fine, then you two fight each other first, and we'll figure it out. It'll make it easier for me in the end. You fight for tw- You fight in 24 hours. And then he teleports away. Superman and Ali fly off. Jimmy wants to get a picture of the two of them, but Superman's like, look, Jimmy, we can't really wait for you to reload your camera. We got to go. We got to go deal with this. Still reloading that camera? (laughs) We don't know, but it feels like kind of a dig. (laughs) But all the world leaders start to scramble and be like, what do we do? What do we do about this? And Lois is like, I mean, Superman just left. And like, I don't, I'm sure he has an answer, but like, I guess we all just trust him? Look, look, we know he's definitely not going to, like, take Muhammad Ali somewhere and just fight him. Like, that would be crazy. Like, they're going to obviously decide between the two of them, admirably, who's going to fight, because that would be crazy otherwise. Superman uh, takes Ali to the Fortress of Solitude, mm-hmm. builds a boxing ring, oh, and boy. transports it to a pocket dimension where a minute takes an hour, and where a red sun lamp simulates the light of the Scrub homeworld, which, by the way, is on a red sun planet, so that they will be evenly matched. Ah, that, that, way, is, that is pretty key. That way say. they can stretch a day into two months, and Superman can learn literally anything about boxing. Like, literally needs to learn how boxing works. So Muhammad Ali starts teaching him all about the sweet science of boxing. And, you know, he gets a few good licks in there. But, you know, Superman's... A, a genius in mathematics as well as a Hercules in strength. That's the thing that everyone always forgets, forgets about to Superman, include. Yeah. So, like, he's a smart guy, so he's learning about boxing. Also, one nation, it's not stated which one, but one nation of Earth panics and fires missiles at the spaceships. Oh, boy. And the missiles are deflected by the laser field or uh, force field or whatever. And Rattler's like, please don't do that again. I will destroy all of you. Like, you, get, you everybody gets one. <laughs> we were just trying something. I know, I know what you were trying. I'm from a warlike planet, guys. Fair enough. Don't do it again. <laughs> These scrub sensors also detect, hey, there's this pocket dimension where time is slower. Um, he, They're cheating. Ollie and Superman had a 24-hour window, and they definitely broke it in a weird roundabout way. So they send a few robots into the pocket dimension. One little cute one. One very large red one and one very large yellow one. So basically, the Rock'em Sock'em robots just show up in the middle of this amazing boxing ring. Amazing, yeah. Um, so they have to fight Rock'em Sock'em robots. Yeah. So Superman closes the little hatch with the uh, red sunlight in it and fights these robots. And then the other, ro- the little robot, the one that's just there to be like, "I'm the one who talks," is like, <laughs> sure. "Is like, why would you program the big ones to do that?" Yeah, it'd be crazy. But it's like, oh well, they realize after talking to him that by fighting this these robots and like not complying they're risking earth and they're like all right i guess we've had enough time to 
teach Superman everything he might need to know about boxing in case so he ends up being the one. So why does Muhammad Ali go fight? Well, no, they're both they're going to fight each other. Ah. Uh, but whoever then fights after that needs to know about boxing to fight the champion. Pretty cool that Muhammad Ali was still like, hey, I'll still teach you how to fight. Yeah. Superman and Ali fly up to the mothership uh, where they meet Ratlar and Hunya, a very large scrub, very beefy, muscly guy who was created in a lab specifically because of situations like this to fight champions from other planets. Huh. This is his whole thing. Also, all he says is Hunya. It is his name and it's his battle cry. Oh, so he's like a Pokemon. He's like a Pokemon awesome. of murder. So he's like... <laughs> he's a Pokemon. He's like a... Yeah, that's, that's fair. I was going <laughs> to reference the hit the Chan or whatever, but like, I guess all of them... The, no, they all. They yeah, just... They're just monsters. They, they fight till they murder. They're pocket monsters. Hunya shows off his feats of strength, but Ali just yawns and calls him unimpressive. And then he later tells Superman, sometimes a fight is half won before you put on the gloves. The trick is to rattle your opponent, make him too mad to use his smarts. Mm. Superman and Ali get to work planning because they need to have something up their sleeve uh, while thousands of different aliens fly to the scrub homeworld. The homeworld is called Bodice, by the way. Mm. Countless more, like millions of aliens are going to watch this broadcast, including Earth. Jimmy Olsen is selected to commentate the fight. I don't know why. I don't. <laughs> Out of all of the Earth reporters. If everyone on Earth. You know that who should be. we pick? That guy. <laughs> yeah. That, what? That guy who was there. Well, what about Walter Cronkite or <laughs> any of these people that have known to be like, you know, world-renowned journalists? Yeah. Nah, let's do Jimmy Olsen. Look, the cover of this issue has 172 different cameos of fictional and real people from 1978. Like, any one of them probably could have been the commentator. <laughs> Amazing. Batman's on there. He would have been great at this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Superman enters the arena, and he's flanked by his last-minute trainers, O.J. White from the United States Olympic team, and Perry White, his old boss, who apparently used to be a Golden Gloves finalist, which no one, including Jimmy Olsen, remembers. Fair enough. Muhammad Ali enters, flanked by his team, Angelo Dundee, his trainer, Herbert Muhammad, his manager, and Bundini Brown, his corner man. These are all real people. Yeah. They enter the ring, and the robot, that little tiny robot, is the referee, and he's like, no hard feelings. <laughs> and they're like, uh, yeah, cool, bye. Superman fights in costume because otherwise many aliens would not be able to tell the two humans apart. We just look too similar. Aww. Like there's a few shades of difference, but everyone's like, I don't, Yeah, okay. they're both, they both have two arms. Yeah, and two, two arms, two eggs. And don't. One head, which is just insane. Yeah, bonkers. Like why put everything why only up in one? there? Just in one, all your eggs in one basket. Yep. The bell rings for round one, and Superman seems to have mastered Ali's fighting style. He's using a lot of his own moves against him. It actually seems to catch Ali off guard Mm. about how he has memorized Ali's fighting style. Round two, Ali reorients. Ali pummels Superman pretty soundly. Nice. And Superman starts reeling, but he keeps standing, and the crowd starts chanting, starts shouting, fall down. And for an entire page... Superman keeps standing as Ali keeps punching him in the face. Wow. The crowd keeps shouting, fall down. Lois is like horrified that the man she loves is about to die in the ring. But Superman does not fall. He can't fight back. He can barely move. He can barely see, but he does not fall down. Wow. And as it gets to the point of like, okay, we're about to watch Superman be murdered in the ring. Ali walks away from him. Just turns around and starts start walking away. And everyone's like freaks out in the crowd. They're like, make a call, ref, make a call. The ref declares Ali the victor, and then finally Superman allows himself to fall. Wow. It's, Very powerful. It's pretty It's pretty cool. Wow. The aliens move to pick up Superman, but Ali shouts, hands off. Take your slimy hands off that man. We take care of our own. You come to our planet, shove us around, make us dance to your music. Well, don't give us a hand now. You haven't earned the right. If one of you so much as touches him, I'll punch you out. And there's this just page-long panel of... Superman, his face bloody and swollen on a gurney as the humans are pushing people aside and pushing him through the crowd. And uh, Hunya watches and sort of curiously as the humans wheel him away. Uh, we cut to Jimmy and Lois outside Ollie's dressing room waiting kind of anxiously and Ratlar arrives in like a floating throne. It's very cool. And demands to know like, yeah, oh, what hole has the loser crawled into? And they're like, yeah, well... Ollie's taking care of Superman, and Ratlar does not understand those words in that order. Oh, really? Like, he's just like, why is Ollie helping Superman? He's beaten him. What can Superman do for Ali now? <laughs> like, he does not understand. Like, I, you said helping him, but he's the loser. I don't... It does not compute. This doesn't why make would sense you... to you. Why would you... He will only make you weaker by being in your presence. Kinda, yeah. 
uh, Ollie comes out and shows Superman is in an oxygen tent or over his face because mm-hmm. he got his got face pulverized. pulverized. And he says Superman is in critical condition. He needs to be flown back to Earth. Ratlar has Superman loaded into an antique rust bucket, a loser's ship. In <laughs> What? Yeah. And in the morning, it flies off. But as he flies off, the narration tells us, and we see in the panels, row after row of crack soldiers take formation. No Imperial Order summoned them. In fact, Emperor Ratlar would be outraged if he knew. Yet these soldiers stand in silence until the ship disappears from sight. In their hearts, there is a special place for this alien warrior. And when fighting men sit around alien cook fires on distant outposts, they'll tell about the man who would not fall down. Very cool. The main event arrives. And Ali and Hunya weigh in. Uh, all, Hunya breaks the scales. Obviously. And Jimmy says, yeah. Is no one like, yeah, this is fine, I guess? And Jimmy's like, oh, well, maybe it's better. Maybe Ali doesn't necessarily want to know how much Hunya's going to weigh in on. Shut up, Jimmy. <laughs> anyway, in his intro, Jimmy says, and this intro is being broadcast to everyone, Jimmy says the humans are just like any of the other alien races watching. That's what unites them. That's why all these various bizarre, you know, radically different aliens are watching they all share something in common they fight to survive he says the non-earthlings have been told the earthlings pose a threat to all civilized worlds he says on earth we don't show our good intentions by fighting with our neighbors but by showing what good friends we can be so please don't judge us when a gun is held to our head and we're forced to fight to survive and as he, this broadcast is going out Ratlar is kind of like I don't I'm not so happy with this message going out to the masses. I want everybody to be down for, like, fights and stuff. This feels like morals. Too bad the concept of censorship hasn't occurred to me. (laughs) Too bad there's no seven-second delay. I'm only a space emperor, (laughs) but apparently I've got a pretty free deal with, like, uh, information and media. Just as the fight is about to begin, a glowing figure appears in the ring. A golden woman in a flowing dress. The scrub identify her as Aranem, the spirit of courage. Although when Perry declares, great, Caesar's ghost, she says, no, Perry, the Romans knew me as Athena. What? (sighs) Yeah. (sighs) So a god just like appeared in the ring. Yeah. She will moderate the contest instead of the robots. That seems like a huge upgrade from the tiny speaking robot yeah, Ratlar... to, to a god once posing as Athena. <clears throat> right. Ratlar is like, well, I certainly can't object to that. And so she lays out telepathically the rules for a fair fight. Uh, Muhammad Ali does a little trash talk to Hunya. And Ratlar, is, he, Matt, Ratlar, by the way, is floating in a glass egg. He's in a chair that's in a glass egg, like two feet away from the ring. Oh, wow. Like, best seat in the house. Yeah. Definitely just not the person you want to sit behind. I guess it's glass, so a lot of people can still see behind, see past him. But still. But he shouts, it's unfair! And r says, no, the use of psychology in warfare is a universally accepted tactic. I guess so. And that, by the way, I think is the last line she has in the comic. She does not participate in the other events <laughs> well, that's that the happen. La- that's the last bit she has to share with everyone. Yeah, she does not. I forgot about her as the comic goes on. <laughs> she does not continue to play a role. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> Ratlar demands Ali make a prediction for when he'll lay out Hunya. This is something that Ali is famous for. You always predict what round people are going to go out on. So what round? He says, predict, arrogant buffoon. And should you be wrong, my armada will reduce your world to a smoldering rock. Wow, that's a a little bit more added pressure than just beat your crazy steroided monster. (laughs) Yeah, beat him. And also, if you're wrong about what round out (laughs) of 12 or whatever it is, Ali predicts round four. Says, "I'll, I'll destroy Hunya, and shouts that he's the greatest, he's the king, which, of course, the greatest was his nickname. That was his title. Right. (laughs) Meanwhile, Ali's corner man... Bandini Brown sneaks out of the arena, starts moving quietly through the corridors. Most of the guards are gone. They're watching the fight. But a few are still in the hall, and he has to fight them as he sneaks really? through the halls. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Round one of the fight does not go well for Mr. Muhammad Ali. Is it because he's fighting a roided-out alien monster? That is a contributing factor. He's pummeled basically until he's saved by the bell. Wow. Yep. Um, meanwhile, hey, him and Zach Morris have one thing in common. Yeah, just that one, probably. Just that one. Bundini breaks into a control center, knocks out a few guards, then pulls off 
his Bundini mask. Uh huh. It's Superman. Uh, da da da. Bundini mask. Uh, his face is clearly bruised and swollen, but he right. is alive. They sent Bundini in his place back to Earth as a like as Superman. And then the uh, spirit of Athena comes down. She goes, also, sometimes deception is a totally okay <laughs> war tactic, yeah. along with psychological warfare. I've got a lot of leeway when it comes to war. <laughs> Superman calls the ships around Earth, mimicking Ratlar's voice, I assume, and commands them as Ratlar to return to Bodice. Uh Then Superman makes his way to the hangar and boards a ship. He knocks out the pilot and boards this tiny little ship. During the fight, Ali is being pretty severely beaten, and Jimmy says Ali has no steam left. Ratlar offers an alternative. Okay, yes, I can destroy the Earth. Or, if the governments of Earth, all of them, agree to deed the people of Earth as slaves, then they will all be spared. And Ali says, no, there's another option. I can whoop on ya. Then he returns to the fight like a man possessed, and the tide begins to turn. Mm. Ratlar calls the fleet, and he's like, look, guys, just be ready to destroy Earth. And they're like, we're here, we're back. Like, we're on our way to Bodice right now, like you said. And he's like, turn your asses around and go back to Earth like you're supposed to be on Earth, guys. Dude, I do not want to be late to blowing up Earth. It's got to happen immediately. <laughs> so as they leave, Superman follows in his ship. And as they reach our solar system, around when, they, around when they get to Jupiter, he pops out of his ship. I hope he put the guy he knocked out in a place where he didn't immediately lose all his oxygen. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I hope. But whatever. He's not a murderer. He's not Spider-Man. And <laughs> begins taking on the Armada single-handedly because he's no longer near that red sun that's exactly why Da-da-da-da. ali manages to punch out punch hunya out of the ring breaking Whoa. breaking the ropes and sending him into the crowd but ratlar says the humans won by trickery so he gives the order to destroy the earth but he pulls up the feet and oh look superman's fighting a whole bunch of alien ships <laughs> outside of earth's orbit superman is being pummeled he does not look like he's got much fight left in him superman is he's getting pummeled by lasers oh i guess so yeah like a whole bunch of lasers uh, uh lasers with fists yeah yeah, sure. The ships line up all at once to fire on Superman, but as they're about to fire, he rouses with new life. He basically pulls the rope dope. He zips around them and goes through the engine rooms of all the ships at once. Jeez. And here's the narration. By all the laws of nature, sound cannot be heard in space. Yet this time, this one scream of agony and determination welling up from the depths of a being who will not lose his adopted home, even though he may die, is heard throughout the galaxy well that is a pretty dope line this comic is filled with dope lines (laughs) it really is superman and the ships are left adrift in space that really did take all the steam out of him that Uh, you know it's okay if he kind of taps out at that point (laughs) he's floating unconscious i just took out a whole space armada sleep (laughs) by the way he sleeps in space and it's like it's fine totally not a problem (laughs) but ratlar orders the rest of the fleet like all the rest of the people that are not just that contingent that was on earth Cole makes the order and like everyone Go to Earth, and we're going to destroy it now. And at this, Hunya rises, smashes into Ratlar's floating egg, sending his little chair smashing to the ground. And Ratlar commands the soldiers, protect him, protect me. None of them move. And Hunya speaks for the first time, saying something that's not Hunya. Are you so blind, Ratlar? No one will raise an arm to help you. You've proven yourself to be a coward and a being completely without honor. What is more, you've disgraced the name of Scrub throughout the galaxy. Your shame is our shame. I warn you now, Ratlar of the Scrub, whether you live or die by our laws, if you ever open your mouth to speak, I will tear the life from your throat. Jeez. That was a turn. (laughs) Yeah. Also, third dope line of the comic. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Superman is fished out of the vacuum of space several hours later. He's fine. And Hunya... He's only been beaten by Muhammad (laughs) Ali and then fought an entire fleet of alien ships. Yeah. Hunya is there. He's wearing, like, more, like, ceremonial robes almost at this point. Okay. Although it could just be, like, that's his robe that he wears when he's not in the ring. Like, you know, when boxers go out and they, like, have the robe on? I have to imagine it is because, like, either that was the case or they fashioned a ceremonial robe for him real quick. Hunya explains that they were told humans were without... They were without honor. They were warlike. But throughout this whole tournament, Ratlar's undoing was that he set up this tournament and humans showed themselves to be honorable and self-sacrificing. Traits which most scrub, <laughs> besides Ratlar, respect above all else. Mm. Lois is astonished that fair play apparently saved the Earth. And Ali responds, when you come right down to it, fair play is what it's all about. If more people tried to live by the simple rules of fair play, my people, all people, will get a fair shake. Wise words. The humans are returned home, and a few days later, Superman and Ali meet up, and we learn that Superman 
The reason that he had to form this plan and be like, okay, they're definitely going to destroy our planet is because he overheard Ratlar when he gave the order to destroy the island. He mm. overheard his conversation in space. Don't ask how. Science doesn't matter. You know, super hearing yeah, in super space, hearing which through we the vacuum just of, it's fine. made a comment sure, that it's, it's not Maybe possible. they were in low atmosphere. It doesn't matter. Sure. It doesn't matter. Uh, radio waves. That's the thing that travels through space. And he can hear radio waves. Touche. There you go. Also, he can speak in space because of, I'm not kidding, look it up. It's on Wikipedia. Super ventriloquism? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> nope, you heard me. I'm sorry, what? Super ventriloquism is a power that Superman has. Mike, look, that's totally that fine. That lets him talk to Muhammad Ali when he's holding Muhammad Ali and basically a giant hamster ball. What? Through space. We glossed over. That's how they got to the Ratlar ship. Holy crap. He how took... did we do that? <laughs> we had a lot to cover. It took less time than I thought, so I can go back and add that detail. <laughs> But, yeah. Anyway, he overheard that conversation. He knew how irrational Ratlar was. So he knew, win or lose, Ratlar was going to destroy the Earth. What a dick. So he memorized the layout of the ship on the flight to Bodice so that he could move through it as Bundini Brown. Hmm. And Ali reveals, yeah, I know you're Clark Kent. And Superman's like, what? <laughs> That's crazy. That crazy. And he's like, look, you said Jimmy didn't have any film in this camera. And the only people who knew that were Lois, Jimmy, me and Clark. And then Lois walks in the room like, "Was did somebody say something about somebody? It's like, no, you'll never figure it out. And Lo- Muhammad Su- Ali, world's greatest detective. Su- Superman, world's greatest investigative journalist. Yeah, I guess. And Superman says, well, I could have used x-ray vision to figure that out. And Ali says, you wouldn't do that because x-rays spoil film. Right, champ? And Superman says, yeah, you're right. And they call each other champ. And then there's this two-page spread of the two of them shaking hands. And Ali just says, Superman, we are the greatest. That's pretty nice. It's a pretty nice comic, Mike. Thank That's you. Thank you, Jay. Just super epic, too. Yeah. They managed to fit in a lot of stuff. I thought it was just going to be another comic of like, I guess Superman and Muhammad Ali have to punch each other in the face. Oh, look, this person punched harder. And that's the end of the comic. But that's a pretty epic, actually like almost movie-like story. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. And we got to have Muhammad Ali punch a giant roided out alien monster. So I guess Muhammad Ali won that fight, right? Yeah. He won both fights. Pretty dope. I mean, he's the greatest. He is the greatest. Also, reportedly, and I don't know if this is true, but reportedly the rumor is that he like wrote some of his own dialogue because they had to license him. And they of had to, course. Like, they had to be report. like, hey, is it cool if you fight Superman? So apparently he wrote some of those epic lines. I don't what? know. I don't know which ones. What? That's the rumor. That's awesome. He had a very distinct style of speech, so <laughs> it would not surprise me. That's true. Man. He was the greatest, and still is. So, wow. Great main segment, Mike. And that'll take us on to our game, Super Mundane. All right, this is Super Mundane. This is the game where we name a mundane task or activity, and we'll have to decide which hero of Marvel or DC is the best and worst at this specific activity. And this is, who is the best and worst party entertainer? Party entertainer, Zatanna. So, oh, uh, mm, that is pretty good. She basically is a magician. But here's the thing. Party entertainer? I feel like Zatara feels like more of like a crappy kid's birthday magician. Yeah. Than Zatanna does. I don't know why. Like He does, yeah. Just because he feels like that super stagey, like, all right, everybody, I'm going to pull a card from my hands and then... And then it's just like, do it again. But I feel like Zatanna would actually be good at it if it was like for kids or That's for true. adults. Like it would be, she would be very good at that. See, I always. Zatanna, by the way, is a DC character uh-huh. who is a magician. And how does she do her magic, Mike? She speaks everything backwards. Yep. Very interesting. Yeah. Apparently you can just do magic by speaking the words backwards. Well, I can't. Yeah. So Zatanna is a really good one. Wow. That was really fast. Like I think 0.5 seconds. <laughs> This proves that I definitely don't think about these things after I'm like, <laughs> this sounds like fun. <laughs> I definitely don't. Well, I Jay, play these things straight, folks. Well, I do not think about it. Well, Jay, who would be the worst? Mm, now, this might be the more difficult one. Zatara. All right, done. Perfect. <laughs> Zatanna and Zatara. The Joker. He's not a hero. <laughs> That's true. He also would be terrible, but no one would hire him. I think in this one case, we got to put a little bit of a caveat. <laughs> also not a hero. Also not a hero. He's disqualified. Yeah, fair enough. Mm, hero, 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 hero. Entertainer. Ragdoll. No. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Red Tornado. 
Why? What are feelings? I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He has like <laughs> thoughts and stuff. <laughs> I didn't say he didn't have thoughts. <laughs> I said he didn't have feelings. Like a I robot. I think he understands feelings. I think. I don't know. Who cares? Who would hire him? <laughs> oh, I know it would be great for this kid's party. A tornado maker. <laughs> I know. It doesn't hold up at all. I don't know if that would go beyond step one. Can someone become a bounce house but be irresponsible? Yeah. Plastic Man. Oh, yeah. Also, wasn't Plastic Man a criminal? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know who Plastic Man knew, Mike? Do you know who he knew? Batman? No, but do you know oh, who he used to work for, Mike? Kite Man? Yeah, he used to work for Kite Man. New listeners are not going to know why you're so excited no, about saying no, Kite Man on the like, air. Someone has been listening to the show for two years and be like, oh, wow. Three years? That was an yeah. old episode, Jay. Oh, my God, that was a while ago. But yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, I guess Plastic Man, but I feel like he'd be good. Yeah, he would be good, it'd, too. He could be a bounce well, house or like a... He'd be good at a s- kid's party. Slide or something. Yeah, I guess we haven't really... That'd be weird, actually. No, hold on. That'd be really creepy. Oh, if hey. you're sliding down a person's body yeah, and hey, face? Yeah, that'll be a slip and slide. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Uh, this is problematic. Uh, yeah, kids, keep spraying me with that water. Uh, uh, I don't want uh, this. Uh, uh. You know who he, Everyone's like, I thought this was going to be a good idea, but it's actually really unsettling. You know who that reminds These me of? These children are bouncing inside of me. God. <laughs> Horrible. You okay. Know? Veto. <laughs> no. That, I think hard that, pass. No, I no. think this one works. No. Hard pass. Why? Because this is way too creepy to go down. <laughs> but that's why We've it's We've talked about Gambit so many... Here's we a, just spent a moment saying he would be great and then realized right <laughs> afterwards this is horrifying. I'm going to give this a pass... Because I have an I have an interesting s- different way to go with this that's not nearly as creepy. Okay, okay. And molesty. <laughs> what you really don't want? The- <laughs> dead man. The- dead man? Now why would anyone hire dead man? I think it'd be a fun party trick. Would it? Oh man! Well, I've no. always wanted my child to be possessed. You said who can come you and possess said my child? Party entertainer. You did not say for kids parties. I didn't say that. But we've kind of shifted to kids' parties. Only with creepy-ass okay. plastic man. I've never thrown a party and been like, now if only I could possess one of my friends. You've never had a seance? No. Well, neither have I, but then I know people go. who have. I guess. I'm just saying, I mean, hey, it'd be great probably for a Halloween party. Right. That's what you'd think. Like, hey, we're going to have a party. We're going to commune with the dead. Oh, it's dead man. He's kind of a shit. Like, <laughs> he is kind of a dick. <laughs> Because it'd be more like he wouldn't ruin the party because he was evil. He would just ruin the party because he would screw with people. Yeah. But- other option. Other option. Constantine. <laughs> Constantine, to be a complete dick, would accept this invitation and then would go and be terrible. Yeah, he would be. He would be a terrible party magician for kids or adults. So now we're just going through the members of Justice League Dark. Yeah, Justice League Dark. Who else Dark. is left? Entrigan the Demon? Yeah, Entrigan <laughs> and- would be pretty bad. And Swamp Thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you would hire Constantine. Well, I mean, you would maybe hire Constantine. Swamp Thing would be great. <laughs> it's Constantine. We all pronounce it uh, wrong. Whatever. Rhymes with Valentine. Yeah, it's true. I mean, he'd give you, you know, some free cigarettes. I don't know. He would charge you for those cigarettes. Yeah, he would. With your soul, probably. <laughs> well, he's not the devil. <laughs> I mean, almost. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just a, he's just a jackass. Yeah. I don't know. Can we do worse than Constantine? I mean, uh, besides man. going to creepy, no, we're not doing that. We we are we are over the mind where I feel comfortable. Fair enough. What about Ant Man? He's fine. Yeah, he'd be good. <laughs> well, he'd make ants do cool stuff. I guess it's like a flea circus. Yeah, he'd basically be a flea. Circus. He would be a flea circus. Yeah, and then you could like stand on him, and he could like grow big, and then you could like walk around the town. He'd be pretty great, actually. He'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Etrigan always speaks in verse. No, 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 no. No one's hiring Etrigan. No, they're hiring Jason Blood Morgan, whatever <laughs> Why his are name they hiring is. him? I don't know. Kids want to learn about history. It's not necessarily a kid's party, Jay. <laughs> but why are adults hiring him? Fair point. <laughs> Catwoman. Because she would steal all your shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. She'd be like, look, I'm a cat, and then steal all your stuff. Although, I don't know why you'd hire her. Hmm. <laughs> The, here's my here's my dilemma. Yeah. Plastic Man is the right answer. Yeah, he is. It's just so creepy. So here's my compromise. Jump inside of me. Here's my compromise. It is not a kid's party. Okay. <laughs> so there's here's my compromise. No slip and slide. <laughs> Fine. Because slip and slides are, first of all, objectively terrible. <laughs> I will allow trampolines, bounce houses, and other fun shape-shifting 
but the reason it's shitty is because he steals from you. I like that this works because I'm imagining that you're Tony Stark and I'm Plastic Man when you're saying these things to me. <laughs> Look, I will I'm not allow slip and slides, only bounce houses. Yeah, I guess. But whose party is this for? Is this Thor's party? They're not in Plastic, the same universe. No, neither is Tony Stark. That's true. It's All Spawn's of these things party. make sense. <laughs> we're having a party for Savage Dragon and we're fighting Hellboy. Woo! Deep cut. I mean, not that deep. <laughs> no, not that deep. Oh, uh, boy. Whose uh, party is it? Jimmy Olsen's party? It makes as much sense. No, it's Batman's. Obviously, it's Batman's. So they're trolling Batman by inviting Plastic Man. No one else would invite Plastic Man but Batman. <laughs> or what? Alfred. What? I guess Alfred probably did. <laughs> for the kids! <laughs> so uncomfortable with all this i mean i guess we brought up before that professor xavier had creepy love thoughts for is this really that right? weird Mike? it is yeah p- yes that's why he's a bad answer jay yeah <laughs> it's weird no slip and slide that's where i draw the line fine fine but a bounce house they can cool. jump inside him all they want i want that they just joke. can't slide across him just want while he's joke. wet that's what i that's <laughs> see that face is very my uncomfortable face. <laughs> yes that is my problem. Well, guys, we've uncomfortably found the answer. We found it originally. No one's still listening. <laughs> no, they're not. So the answer is Plastic Man is our worst and Zatanna found in 0.5 seconds. I love how that took us completely the opposite of time <laughs> we to cut, find the second one. We cut a lot of us deliberating about whether we were going to go with Plastic Man or not. Very true. I feel dirty. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was episode 71 of Because Comics. We'll be posting a new episode every other week. If you'd like to download more episodes or check out other similar podcasts, head over to partialart.com. Of course, you can email us any questions at becausecomics at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at PartialArc. And be sure to check out more content from our comic boy wonder, Mike Christensen, at partialart.com, where he writes articles every Tuesday and Thursday. Jay gestures to me every time he says that. I know, and no one can see it. <laughs> it's just, well, I can, and you can. Oh, right. You are real. Thanks for listening, and remember... I am one with the Force. The Force is with me. I am one with the Force. The Force is with me. I am one with the Force. The Force is with me. I am one with the Force. The Force is with me. Because, 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 because comics.